Longstanding problem in the city of Portland has been um, the awful um, uh, sex trafficking problem that has plagued us, and awful all around, but especially as it relates to the trafficking of minors for sexual ex exploitation. Victims of these crimes are often afraid to come forward. Victims come from all walks of life, and often vulnerable youth that are runaways and homeless youth. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, 450,000 youth run away from home each year. And the National Runaway Hotline states that one in three teens who do run away are likely to be lured into sexual exploitation within 24 hours of being on the street. This city council has supported, funded, putting together a partnership that has real, realized some, an amazing, positive, um, holistic approach to this problem. We have battled uh, denial, denial that has shown up on the front pages of the local daily newspaper, denial amongst other uh, folks in the community that this is a, a real problem that is wonderful a city as we are, this is also taking place in our neighborhoods with our kids. There is unfortunately an insidious and a very dark place that exists even here in Portland. And there is unfortunately a 13 or a 14 year old or a 15 year old girl out there who's being forced by a pimp somewhere to advertise and sell her body for sex so that some sex trafficker or pimp can profit over her being repeatedly raped. And when you hear about these numbers, young women being forced to make $1,000 a day, um, and you put that in raw numbers in human terms, it's astronomical. I know this has been an issue that you focused a lot on, and you provided resources where the priorities are. And I have to say, the Portland Police Bureau has done amazing things in combating sex trafficking. From the sex trafficking unit that Mike is in charge of, to the East Precinct Prostitution Coordinating Team, they are uniformly an amazing group of officers and detectives that are dedicated to combating and trying to eliminate sex trafficking. So on behalf of the U.S. Attorney's Office, thank you. I think the thing that I'm most proud about of SARC is that we are the only non-mandated reporter not everybody is aware of that. Everyone else by law is mandated. And I think that's the gift that we can give these children is a moment of knowing I can be very safe with you. You are expecting nothing of me. There is no cost in which I share my story with you. And you watch the stress and anxiety come off of them. And you begin to build rapport and engage and share and the story comes out. And when they have that trust with you is when they are able to put together a safety plan and from there put together a plan to begin engaging with all of the players that are mandated rep reporters. But it's done in trust and it's not done in pushing. Thank you, uh, because you're right, Sam. Before you came and visited our shelter, there was not a single, not even a residential bed, there was not a single safe shelter bed in the entire state. And after that, I can tell you since those beds have opened, we've had over 100 girls through the shelter. I can tell you those 100 girls represent, and some boys as well, that they represent uh, over 140 or 50 episodes because many of these kids come back multiple times. And we've now changed our standard for how we measure success. Instead of counting how many times somebody runs away, we count how many times they come back because we're seeing the kids who are the most safely engaged in treatment, who will move to prosecution, who will work with SARC, are kids who have, have to build that by having the door constantly open. And by having the city and the county money together, we've now been able to give them one uniform door. If you want 10 minutes of safety off the street, you've got it. If you want 10 years of safety off the street, well, we can get you through age 17, and then we'll find something after that. I think that the, the biggest highlight here is the collaboration that goes on between everybody, all of the city partners, as well as uh, county partners and, and the federal government. It, there's been uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office. There's been, it's been amazing to talk with everybody here uh, about the work that they, that they do and to see the work that has gone into it and, and the, the thanks that they feel for what City Council has done and uh, just really, really hoping to see that continue into the future. 
Thank you. Again, thank you all very much. Sure. Thank you, Sam, for taking this on and everybody for your great work. Aye. I very much appreciate everybody being here to talk about it and the mayor's leadership in not only talking about it, but doing something about it. Wonderful to hear you say that both from the nonprofit side and the law enforcement side, we have a, we're doing things differently here. And that gives us a hope we can continue to make progress. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Aye. Adams. Um, this is one of the, the most important um, inadequately understood, uh, embraced problem by the city, and not just city government, because this city council, as you've heard, is one of the few in the nation that have actually stepped up to the problem, but it's still, we're fighting this denial, and I really appreciate um, council listening to this report, because it shows we can, two things, we can make progress, and we have a lot more work to do.